The Extrafire GPZ1 mousepad is the second product in a collaboration project between Extrafire and content creator Zai, Rocket Jump Ninja, Rakoa. The first, the MZ1 mouse, whilst not entirely revelatory, was a refreshing alternative to a lot of conventional mouse shapes, so I was keen to see if the GPZ1 would follow suit for pads and provide us with something new and innovative. Whilst your overall opinion of the pad will be personal, I'm pleased to say that it absolutely offers something I've not experienced across 80 or so comparable pads that I own. The GPZ1 is currently sold at $35 or your local equivalent and is available in one size, 460 by 400 millimeters, one thickness, four millimeters, and one color option, black, as shown on screen. Whilst Extrafy can't offer definitive comment on future product roadmap, a representative for the brand suggested that an additional larger size may be considered in the future, but this is subject to demand. The pad is shipped very tightly rolled in an attractive but ultra slimline box, typically only seen on thinner two to three millimeter pads and uses an inner cardboard mailing tube to protect and retain the shape of the pad in transit. I was interested in why this shipping choice was used as opposed to more conventional options and an extra five representative confirmed that the slimline box was an intentional decision to reduce the environmental impact of our product. The smaller box means less carbon footprint as we ship more mouse pads and less air. The cardboard tube inner isn't only a way to protect the product, but also comes from our shared commitment with Zyrocoa to environmental sustainability and provided a greener alternative to the typical plastic sleeving used by other brands. Now it is positive to see Extrafy taking steps to be more environmentally conscious, but the result immediately out of the box is that the pad probably won't lay flat and will likely have creases or indentations from the stitching on the surface. I took some photos of how my GPZ1 looked fresh out the box and its condition over subsequent hours to help illustrate the experience that you'll likely have. What you'll probably notice is that the curled edges and indented surface quickly faded after being laid flat on my desk and within 24 hours, the pad was in perfect condition with no need for rollbacks, steaming or any other remediation techniques that I've seen mentioned online. I think it might be worthwhile for Extrafy to include an advice slip in the tube that lets new owners know what to expect from their pad when unrolling for the first time and how it will remedy itself after a few hours of unravelling left undisturbed. This would hopefully reduce the amount of people disappointed thinking that they might have a faulty product straight out the box. I'm pleased to say after the first 24 hours described above, my GPZ1 has been flawless laying completely flat to the desk. The backing used is a medium density rubber that does offer some give without introducing pressure inconsistencies and provides good adhesion with no movement at all from the desk when in use. The Extrafy branding is not printed on the surface of the pad, but instead is a small stitch tag on the upper right corner displaying both Extrafy and Rocket Jump Ninja co-branding, which can be tucked away under the base if you don't want it visible. Whilst attractive and novel, whichever way you opt to have this tag will unfortunately create some amount of mild lift in the surface of the pad, but due to its location in the top right, you're unlikely to ever feel it in use or have it impact your play in typical game scenarios. The edge stitching itself is consistent throughout and of a relatively high quality. It's also mostly level with the surface of the pad, so you shouldn't feel a pronounced bump if you do swipe too far and roll over the edge slightly. The thread used for the edge stitching is relatively soft, but I could still feel some light abrasion on my wrist and forearm during horizontal swipes and movement. If this is something that you know you're likely going to be sensitive to, then a sleeve might be a good option here to improve your long-term comfort. I haven't had or used this pad long enough to comment on durability, but being a black pad, it's great to see that it hasn't gathered much lint or dust and is easily wiped clean if any does accumulate. It's also machine washable if required, and Extrafy have noted that if you do intend to machine wash the GPZ-1, you should only do so at 30 degrees Celsius, placing the GPZ-1 inside of a washing bag and under no circumstances should you use any fabric softener. The GPZ-1 is also not water resistant and as a consequence, the feel of the surface will likely be affected by humidity. Extrafy have commented that they've tested the pad in various humidity and temperature scenarios and state minimal impact to performance. I can't really refute or give confirmation to this statement as from my own experience with the pad, it's been largely consistent, but again, so is the humidity. The GPZ-1 is advertised as a control pad with an accelerated feel, but the first thing I felt was just how little glide and how much initial friction this pad has. Extrafy placed this pad around 40% on their speed slider illustration, but my experience would be nearer the 10% with the GPZ-1 being the slowest and most controlled pad I have ever used by a country mile. It has almost no glide and I've tested various mice, they all barely moved, making this pad likely best suited to aim heavy games with a lot of initial shot accuracy or recoil control required, like CSGO or Valorant. 
The surface has a unique feel to touch, almost like suede or velvet in a very dense weave that has a fuzzy quality. The amount of initial friction is significant and felt especially strongly when changing direction or micro adjusting, which has a kind of snapping or pressure release feel when the friction does give and the mouse starts to move. The experience is also going to be wildly different based on mouse, weight and even the brand of skates that you're using. Larger surface area skates like the Logitech G Pro X Superlight felt much harder to micro adjust with than small dot layouts irrespective of the weight of the mouse used. Even with the same mouse, the difference between an Ultralight 2 with stock skates and Tiger Arc 2s was immediately noticeable and apparent. It's unusual to have a surface that behaves so differently depending on what you're using on it, so I can begin to see why there's such mixed opinions on how the pad performed and how it behaved. Ceramic skates, for example, barely moved at all and would have made this pad a very fatiguing and challenging experience to be accurate with longer term. The pad also has an advertised quality of being a control profile for small movements and a speed profile for quicker swipes. Drawn a quick set of diagrams to try to explain why I think the pad might be behaving in this way, which I suspect is due to how short and dense the weave fibers of the cloth are, which creates that velvet-like texture that I've described. When the mouse is moving in a single direction, the fibers will lay to one side and the mouse can glide smoothly aligned to the grain. If you do need to change direction, the grain would have to flip in the opposite way, creating that snapping high initial friction sensation before the mouse is again smoothly gliding. When micro adjusting quickly in multiple different directions, the grain swap is happening far more often and that snapping or snagging feel is more pronounced, at least with larger skates and heavier mice specifically. I'm not typically someone who obsesses about mouse weight, but the lightest mice I had, the Final Mouse Starlight 12 and G-Wolves HSK, combined with the fastest aftermarket skates I had, Hyperglides, I felt got the most out of the pad for me and didn't get bogged down with that initial friction felt in some other mice or skate combinations. Whilst the GPZ-1 doesn't have a direct clone, the closest comparable I have to the glide profile and texture feel of the GPZ-1 is the Tiger Esports Ching Sui 2 Pro with the Zowie GSR and X-Ray Pad Equate also feeling pretty similar to run your finger over at least. The Ching Sui 2 Pro is similarly priced, has a thicker, firmer base and a slightly larger play surface, but it, or indeed none of these alternative pads mentioned, have the same unique feel of high initial friction and force required to move the mouse from a stationary position, nor do they have the smoother glide once in motion that the GPZ-1 has. In this respect, I think I've probably summarized my thoughts about the GPZ-1. It's a hard mouse pad to suggest to someone to check out without asking several qualifying questions about what mouse they use, what skates it has, and their glide preference due to just how varied their experience will likely be based on the answers they give. I don't think that the GPZ-1 is a pad for everyone, but I also don't think it was ever really designed or intended to be. In the same way that the first collaboration with Rocket Jump Ninja, the MZ-1, delivered a new shape that challenged you to try something not conventionally comfortable and safe to improve your aim, the GPZ-1 delivers a unique feel and pad behavior not seen from other pads or OEM surfaces to date. I think a lot of focus has emphasized its packaging, its wide applicability, or its comparative glide to other surfaces, but I think that that's missing the point of what the GPZ-1 really offers, and that's something different. If what I've described feels like something you'd want to try out for yourself, or you're happy to have your expectations challenged, then the GPZ-1 might just be the right experience for you.